I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Friday, June the 7th, brought to you in part by To Leave by Norbrook. To Leave is an affordable alternative to Draxon, puts proven efficacy in exclusive plastic packaging for less risk of product loss. For more information, go to norbrook.com. A board battle. And I told you on the previous visit that your Packers were waiting until later in the week for hopefully the board to crash and then they could buy cattle steady or lower. And indeed the board was down pretty big on Thursday and the board has been weak uh, all week long here. And uh, now we've seen the Southern Plains pretty well established a buck lower at 185. Hate to see that, we're trying to gain ground. But the Northern Plains, which has even tighter supplies of market-ready cattle, and of course they got the higher quality cattle there, they're still holding off. And we have not seen the market established in the Northern Plains. We've seen a little bit of trade steady to a little bit lower. But uh, it's just uh, frustrating whenever the, the industry looks at the board so much and, and the board is, uh, is not really fair. Uh, it's it's totally for the for the shorts and there's no longs in there that want to get in there and prop the thing up but uh, why was the board lower this week well they say it was overbought and and some lower of course you can attribute uh, the feeder cattle being lower on Thursday uh, partly to corn being uh, quite a bit higher 12 and three quarters cent higher when you see a, a jump like that in corn that often uh, shakes up the feeder cattle futures there. But we keep seeing this dang bird flu uh, coming up again. And uh, we've seen uh, more stories about that, saying that uh, cows have indeed died in five different states of bird flu. And, and then uh, we saw Dr. Deborah Burks uh, that gained a claim during the COVID and she was uh, on, an, on an interview saying that, uh, you know, we should just test every single cow every week. Are you kidding me? But uh, we've also heard that there's a new strain out there. Uh, don't know whether that has anything to do with the cattle, but uh, I did see a new strain and they said that they had a confirmed case of this new strain that caused the death of a man in Mexico but as far as they know he's had no exposure to any birds or any livestock and also we've heard that the that the man had some really uh, big health problems there he was extremely obese and and had uh, bad diabetes and a lot of different things he was basically bedridden and uh, how they tested him to get this new strain a bird flu we don't know but every time we see this bird flu come up it just gives uh, our, our Chicago traders another reason to kind of uh, beat the board down but we sure don't need that we're trying to gain ground in your fat cattle market but indeed your your uh, your dressed beef prices aren't uh, as hot as we would think they would be here early in the summer now they are well over three dollars and even select hanging hanging over three dollars here but uh, it's just frustrating to see the board dictate the cash instead of the cash dictating the board but uh, you know your June live cattle the spot market there it was a little bit higher it had to be we're well in June and we've got about a six dollar basis to, to the latest uh, little dab of trade we've seen in the northern plains three dollar basis to the southern plains which is is you know not that atypical really but uh you know we just got a, a battle here with the board and and it's frustrating to see that we can't gain ground in the fat cattle market and i don't think we're ever going to get to two dollars live uh anytime we get up to, to 190 or a little bit better we just start seeing things come out of everywhere trying to beat the thing back down but if you're looking to uh, protect yourself against the prices going down, check out Livestock Risk Services with Dakota Moss. He wants you guys to know that it is open season or what they're calling transfer period in June, just in June. So if you would like to change livestock agents with your LRP, 
you can do that in June. You can change to anybody that you want. If you're not happy with where you're at, you want somebody that's got a little more knowledge in it, more experience, you can change that uh, during June. But once we get to July 1st, you're stuck. But uh, they've got some new agents with Livestock Risk Services, including Tim Forth from South Coffeeville, Oklahoma. Uh, you know, he's, he's well versed in, in the cattle industry and knows what's going on and knows a lot about the LRPs and he can educate you guys. Uh, Livestock Risk Services and hasn't had anybody up in that area. So if you're interested in that, give Tim a call. Let's talk about your board on Thursday. June live cattle futures, like I said earlier, were up 50 cents because, you know, the, the, the basis is ridiculous and we're getting pretty deep into June here at 181.82, but all the rest of your contracts on live cattle were lower. August was down 40 cents at 177.47 and your back months were down 65 cents to 127. Feeder cattle, and of course some of that can be, uh, you know, caused by the corn being up big on Thursday, but August feeder cattle down 197 on Thursday at 252.85, still trading at a premium to what our, uh, our cash index levels are at, but you got to remember that's August. That's way out in August, and uh, we got a lot of uh, cattle coming off grass there. Be the best feeding cattle that you see anytime that, that are hung on that August board with the mid to late uh, July cattle that are coming and the August cattle. Uh, you would think that we'd have a better premium than that. September down 210 at 254.10, and your back months were all down big from a buck 62 to down 220. Like I said, July corn was up 12 and three quarters cent at 452 on Thursday. Beans were up 22 and three quarters at $12 a bushel. Kansas City hard red winter wheat up one and three quarters cent at 678. Fat cattle trade, we still haven't seen basically anything in the Northern Plains direct basis in your five area feeding region, but I have sold another 300 confirmed on Thursday. They've only sold 900 in Iowa for the week. The only price we saw confirmed on Thursday was 188. We did see some 190 earlier in the week. I think it's gonna take in the, the low 190s to trade cattle there, guys, and over $3 dressed. Nebraska didn't trade any cattle and haven't traded any cattle negotiated so far this week. But Kansas sold cattle, 4,700 on Thursday, uh, a couple hundred more than that for the week but your, your live trade in, in Kansas, and it's established now at 185, and that's a buck lower than last week. Texas even sold 600 cattle at 185. Box beef cutout values were mixed with choice higher, $1.42 higher at 316.21, and your selects down just seven cents at $300.83. Your slaughter, come in and it's very respectable for this week. They keep saying they're gonna cut kills and then they have backed off of them, but they've gotta do business. And so far this week through the first four days of the week, 489,000 harvested, estimated there. Can't compare with last week because we had the Monday holiday, but same week a year ago was just, we're just 5,000 less than that. So that's not too bad. Actual slaughter information come back for the week ending May 25th. Had your average dress steer carcass weight down a little bit more. I mean, they're still giant, but down a pound at 920 pounds. Talk about what else is going on. Fair piece is that revolutionary product that's scientifically proven, guys. Stress shifts cattle metabolism into survival mode, decreasing weight gain and feed conversion and worsening health outcomes. Fair Peace counteracts that stress and reduces threat perception in all cattle that are treated. For more information, go to fairpeace.com. Let's talk about your feeder cattle market. Uh, your real-time index on DV auction based on an 800-pound cash auction steer up through your middle 12 states late on Thursday was at 249.17. That was up a quarter. Your latest CME cash feeder cattle index was 250.54. Uh, if you're looking to buy some feeder cattle, you're looking for them here early this next week. Sioux Falls Regional Livestock 
in Worthing, South Dakota is having a huge, about 8,000 head of feeder cattle, a barbecue special on Monday. If you're interested in some really top quality cattle up there in the Northern Plains, if you can't get there, get on to dvauction.com, get a hold of them early, get approved where you can view and bid that sale. Also, don't forget about the Independent Cattlemen's Association's 50th Anniversary Convention. That's coming up July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd in San Marcos, Texas. It is a good time, guys. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be uh, presenting. Uh, my buddy Justin Tupper, U.S. Cattlemen's Association president, is going to be uh, presenting. Uh, it's going to be a good time. We're going to talk about things that most trade associations won't talk about. And then we're going to be having a good time uh, with entertainment from Gary P. Nunn there, guys. And if you will uh, get on their website and call in to get your registration, you can get a discount there if you're mentioning a feeder flash. Talk about your big sales on Thursday. Winter livestock in Pratt, Kansas had 2,400 head. It was a smoker on steers, guys. Feeder steers, 8 to 15 bucks higher. Feeder heifers were 3 to 5 bucks lower. But those heifers sold so much higher last week. They were sharply higher last week, so they came off that a little bit. They uh, had a good cow sale, a slaughter cow sale there too. High dressing cows in Pratt, Kansas sold up to 154. Wow. But an impressive quote on some bigger feeder steers. 71 head weighed 763. Probably going to be turned out at 277. Your National Beef Wire stick out sale of the day was Ogallala Livestock Auction in Ogallala, Nebraska. 6,300 head and just impressive quotes from top to bottom and well tested here on the market. Check out this automated market report through Cattle Market Central and there's a lot of really well tested weights there. How about 770 head of five weight steers in Ogallala, Nebraska? The average 553 at 338.43. 329 head of six weight steers average 667 at 285.31. 411 head of seven weight steers average 767 at 264.70. There were 399 head of eight weight steers. They averaged 853 at 252.18. And 522 head of nine weight steers. Ogallala, Nebraska, the average 944 at 234.08. The heifers in Ogallala were also impressive. 413 head of four weight heifer calves, average 450 right on the button at 325.04. 859 head of five weight heifers, average 549, with a weighted average price on all of them of 306 and a quarter. About 499 head of six weight heifers, average 652 at 263.40. 579 head of seven weight heifers, average 753 at 246.66. 351 head of eight weight heifers, average 844 at 231.79. And there were 245 head of nine weight heifers in Ogallala, Nebraska, the average 936 pounds at 222.80. That, uh, the biggest uh, quote that I saw out of Ogallala on a stick out quote was 91 steer calves. Ogallala, Nebraska weighed 589 at 343. Give you some individual quotes. How about Bluegrass Stockyard South in Stanford, Kentucky? Standing in the ring in Stanford, Kentucky, they had 120. Two loads of steers weighed 905 at 257.10. But the most impressive quote that I saw anywhere on Thursday come out of Fairview, Illinois. It was your Macrosin No BS top quote for the day. Fairview Sale Barn in Illinois. They had two loads of the Kerrison steers. They were backgrounded steers, but they had a green look to them. 120 head of them weighed 867 at 267.50. That's your feeder flash for Friday.